Hey there, everyone. Welcome. And it's been a little while since I last did any videos, but I've been starting out on a shmup bullet hell kind of project, and I decided that while I'm doing analysis of a bunch of different types of shmup games, you know, this might be a good, um, you know, a good time to start doing videos again. So anyways, this is Danmaku Unlimited, and I am probably, well not probably, I'm almost certainly not pronouncing that correctly, but this, um, this was the first game I selected to start playing, and quite frankly, I think that all the following games I've got to try out for the genre are going to have a lot to live up to, because just out the gate, like stylistically, this game is so high octane, high energy, with like such a such a vibrant art style that you know I, I feel like everything else is just gonna look bland. I mean, first and foremost, like the first thing that struck me is super interesting about this game is the music, right? You don't usually come across shmups, um, you know, especially not on Steam in the modern age with like this kind of like hard rock, heavy metal, blaring soundtrack that hopefully if I haven't, you know, screwed up the volume adjustment too much on the video, you are actually getting a good listen to. You know, it just keeps pumping and, you know, it's just very high energy. Uh, the other thing that stands out immediately is this uh, extreme contrast between the enemy's bullets and everything else in the scene. You know, the they really stand out from the background, the player's own shots, uh, you know, the player's spaceship. You know, it's just such a... Like, those are the two things that stand out immediately. So, a little bit about the game itself. It's, um, you know, obviously it's a bullet hell. Uh, you have two kinds of um, shots you can use. Uh, normal fire, which is the one happening right now, which you do by holding down A. And then when you hold down X while shooting, it turns into this focused attack, which is the beam you see it switch to. And there's, um, you know, your movement speed slows down when you're doing that focused attack. So there's definitely a trade-off from, you know, doing more power and having it being a straight direction versus, you know, not being such a widespread shot, but lower damage and higher movement speed. Though, I'm going to have to pay a little closer attention, because looking back on it now, I think the whole, all the bullets slow down as well when you're doing a focus shot, and that might just be a frame rate thing and not intentional. I'm not sure. That would be pretty interesting, though, because that would actually put a lot of advantage to staying in focused fire when the, um, uh, when the enemy's shooting a lot. But actually, now that I'm looking again, it looks like the bullets are actually staying at the same speed. So that might have just been, you know, a trick of my eyes or something. But, you know, there's something else to notice here. Um, there's a couple different meters on the screen. Uh, the left meter... Well, first off, both the left meter and the right meter are tied to what are called graze shots. Which, if you'll look at the player's ship... There's the little yellow blinking light, that's the ship's core, and when a bullet hits that core, that's when you lose your you lose your life. And any hits that scrape against the rest of the body of the ship and don't hit the core do what is called uh, graze damage, which goes to filling up one of or actually goes to filling up both of those meters a little bit. Now the left meter is a as far as I tell anyways is a score modifier. The right meter, however, is your kind of uh, super mode, where all the bullets on the screen, when it engages and fills up, as we'll see in a second here, all the bullets on the screen get cleared, the ship's uh, attacks increase, and the damage is amplified, as well as the firing speed, and every enemy you kill drops those golden gems, which go towards your score. Oh, I wanted to point this out also. Pause the game, go to resume, it gives you a little three second countdown to get ready so you're not scrambling to get your fingers back in position from the, you know, from the start button or whatever. I thought that was a really cool feature. 
Um, so boss's life bar is up at the top. You can kind of see the damage being dealt. But there's also a time limit at the top. Now, if you beat this phase of the boss within that time limit, you get a bonus, which I believe is just additional points, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I didn't quite make it. But, yeah, I mean, there's... I mean, as far as shmups in general go, you know, for this kind of a, uh, this vertical shmup, you've got the standard, what, what kind of seems to be the standard aspect ratio locking, using a, you know, very high-res image in the background and then putting the rendered view on top of that. You know, this seems to be kind of a classic way to do it, though there is another option in the menu, as we'll see later, which it kind of mirrors the gameplay at a, um, at a more, uh, I guess, zoomed-in perspective in the background. But, like I said, we'll get to that later. Let's see, I, I took some notes here. Let me see what else I got here that's worth talking about. Yeah, one thing that's important to note also is the, um, you know, that you get to select the weapon loadouts for both your normal shot and your focus shot at the beginning of the game, but there doesn't seem to be any options to change that mid-game. And additionally, there are other types of weapons that unlock once you complete the game or get certain um, get through certain score thresholds, which um, I've only played like two or three games of this, so I haven't finished it yet. I think the furthest I've gotten is the fourth boss, if I'm remembering right. But, uh, yeah, I did I did very early on unlock a score threshold that allowed me to have an extra continue for my next playthrough. So, it seems beyond just weapon unlocks and you know, things of that nature, there are other, I guess, kind of meta unlocks. Yeah, there is also a really cool, um, I really like the, so there's a cool effect going on behind the boss right now where he's shooting that I didn't even notice while I was playing, but I'm noticing now is that um, spinning light, uh, like, circle, you know, kind of just looks like, um, actually I think I saw a similar particle effect on the Unity Asset Store, I used one for a, a mobile game that I did. Yeah, this boss really screws me up with the uh, the horizontal shots coming out of this beam. You saw me jam through a continue right there. But yeah, so the enemy shots, uh, they also flash a little bit. I'm not quite up on my uh, knowledge of ep epilepsy, but I feel like this style of game, and at the very least that effect is probably not great for like photosense photosensitive yeah, photosensitive epilepsy but I did see in the option menu a, um, a setting to to um, enable like a photosensitive safety or something like that so I do need to go back and look into what that is and what the effect is I'm imagining offhand though that it drops all of those um, flickering effects on the enemy bullets at the very least yeah, so very quick end of level transition. Just the player retains control, but it drops down that transparent score screen. We snap in here, the next level loads, and in we go. You know, very quick transitions. So one thing that is um, kind of interesting is that when enemies get killed, their bullets turn into those pale blue balls. And picking those up will go to fill your trance gauge, which gives, once again, give you the, the super. You know, it's also, um, it also puts a little bit of strategy around which enemies do you kill first, right? The, the ones that are shooting the most at you also have the potential to give you the most benefit from dying quickly, as long as a large number of their bullets are on the screen. But that being said, if it's an enemy shooting a straight beam, 
you could sidle up right next to that beam and get a lot of uh, a lot of graze hits and really build up your your combo multiplier that way. Now there is that meter in the top, uh, or not in the top left, but in the uh, upper left section, the spirit mode thing with the number next to it, counting the number of grazed shots. I'm not quite sure exactly what that affects. I mean, I think spirit mode is the um, is what they call the enemy's bullets turning transparent, but. Like, that happens automatically. But I do know there are two different gameplay modes, and it was kind of implied that they have um, different ways of dealing with this kind, with the graze mode feature. So I do need to go do a little bit more looking into that. I do, in the latter half of the video, I do go ahead and take a look at that mode. It also, um, makes it so your trance mode is manually triggered instead of automatically when the gauge is filled. But I think I like it happening automatically more, even if it is, uh, you know, it's taking control out of your hands. It's, you know, not letting you stock up a trance mode for uh, the boss or anything like that. So you might waste it, but, you know, at the same time, this kind of bullet hell game, at least for me, there's so much going on on the screen that it's it's like really hard to focus on too many things at once, right? For the most part, it's just a matter of making sure I'm not getting hit while continuing to shoot in the general direction of the enemies. But I do think this is, is this the boss I got up to, the highest one? No, I think it's the next boss is the last one I get up to. Though, I mean, obviously I'm not doing this while I'm playing. This is all post-commentary, so it could very well be that this is, you know, a different run than the one I'm thinking of. But, yeah, you can see everything kind of goes a little slow here. So that is something to think about also when making a shmup game is, you know, variable speed bullets. Um, additionally, bullets that change speed after being fired. You know, and a lot of, um, there are a lot of really interesting patterns being used here as well, right? You can see the, um, the pedal-shaped ones, they start off almost, I call them pedal automatically, because they start off almost, uh, in the shape of a flower before shooting out in every direction. And additionally, so there we got, um, they all, those bullets are all starting off as a single circle, but every other one is at a slightly different speed, so over time they separate. And there's also the ones that the enemy was shooting at a slight curvature, you know, going uh, in a semicircle left or right, and then in the opposite direction as well. And because they were um, not only being shot, like, with a uh, kind of a curved angle, they came across as kind of this uh, curved crisscrossing pattern, which was very hard to dodge. I think I ate crap on it every single time. And this pattern here is also kind of a bitch where... You know, you got the, um, so many of the normal bullets, you got these, uh, white two lines of bullets, and then you've got a wave of other shots coming the whole way across the screen, except for along the same position as the white shots. So you got to kind of sneak in between the shots and, and, uh, hide from the wave of bullets. But at the same time, you can't just stay there because you're going to get pushed to the bottom of the screen or the other shots are going to, um, come out. This was also, like, once again, there's so many cool patterns in this game. The purple bullets um, are all fit, um, shoot down to the bottom of the screen, and a new set of red ones come out to replace them. And that's kind of the point where you know they're red, they're sticking around for a second, but once they're purple, you need to get out from in between them. And at the same time, here are these uh, laser beams, you know, very slowly pushing you to move across a set of, uh, a set of bullets. That was just me getting cocky. I thought I'd kill the enemy, kill the boss before those bullets would reach me. Yeah, I wish I knew what any of this. Um, uh, I was gonna say Japanese. I don't know what the. I don't even know what character set that is. But um, yeah, I don't want to assume. 
But I wish I knew what some of those uh, some of those words were actually saying, because you know that is kind of interesting. The you know these types of games you usually see shmups. Um, you know they typically come out of Asia or have a Asia style, and you know it's always got like broken English text with a lot of like Asian characters. And, you know, quite frankly, the story is not really the part that you know you really care about in a shmup. It's you know just really the fun of the game. But even still, it'd be interesting to know what cool thing is being said or shown to you on the screen. Now, one thing to another thing to point out, like I, I watched the credits earlier. I think this was like a three-man team that made this, like. They cited, like, freesounds.org for, like, some sound effects, but they had, like, I think it was three or four people between, you know, doing the design, the programming, the art, and the music, which is, you know, just insane, because this game is such high quality. I really was not expecting this, like, I'll, I'll say it again, like, you know, I bought maybe seven or eight different shmup games on Steam. And I think this one was one of the more expensive ones coming in at like, you know, around like 10 bucks. I don't remember exactly. But this, for this to happen to be the one I chose to look at first is just ridiculous. Because I feel like some of the other ones I bought that were like 99 cents are just, you know, they're, I'm going to think they're shit in comparison. Which is just sad because they're probably fine in their own right. But by that same rationale, there's probably also a reason the seller priced them at 99 cents and not at 10 bucks. But yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to... I might flip the game over to easy mode later just to... just to see all the levels, at the very least. Like, I don't like having to do that, but I'm also not... Like, I do alright at shmups, but I wouldn't say I'm particularly good at them. But, you know, maybe that's just more, need more practice, right? Like, it's not really a style of game I go after too often. But after playing um, Nier Automata, I've been, you know, I've just been really in the mood to make a shmup. Like, I've had that kind of on the mind. I've been wanting to do a, um, you know, nothing against shmups, but a game with a smaller scope, right? And I'm, I'm kind of almost at the point with my prototype where I've got the full gameplay loop. I'm just coding up the portion dealing with transitioning between like the current level and the next level and the way I want to handle like asset management and scene loading and unloading between those you know just triggering off the right sequence of events but you know aside from that like I've got most of the you know the core infrastructure that makes a shmup but you can't like you can't account for style this game's got some damn style going for it. Like, that's for sure. Like, I'm, I'm... I'm still, I'm just like, I'm completely blown away. Anyways, I think this is the boss where I eat it. So, this will be, uh... This will be wrapping up here pretty shortly. I think we're at what? Yeah, it'll probably be a 20 minute video. So that's good for getting back into it. I hope to do... Uh, there we go. I hope to do a lot more videos soon. I'm going to keep doing the shmup series, though the subsequent ones will probably be a lot shorter, given that you know, I'll probably have a little bit less to talk about. But anyways, uh, that is Dan Maku Unlimited, and thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys later.